What I love to do is introduce the right people to the right people, assemble the smartest people I can think of or reach out to to carry that conversation, and that's exactly what I've done today. Please give my panel a round of applause. Welcome. Okay, guys, Jay Martin here, CEO of Cambridge House, and I'm joined right now by Joanne Fries, the president and CEO of Condente Copper Corp. Joanne, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. And I'm excited to get this story in front of my audience. So thanks so much for making the time. Uh, there's definitely a lot of hunger for properly managed copper companies. And so today I'd love to sort of dive behind the kimono a little bit and uh, hear the story from you, what you're excited about um, and a bit about your background, because anybody who watches my stuff knows I focus on the people I'm people over everything every single time. And, um, you know, you've worked on world class projects all over the world. I'm curious what struck you about uh, your current assets, but let's start with uh, what Condente is, exploration and developments in largely in Peru. And Correct. so there's a lot of noise right now on the political climate in Peru, a lot of movements and uh, speculation. So I'd love to start, Joanne, just with your take. What matters? What's Because it's hard sometimes to, to fight through the noise and get to the signal, what really matters, right? Yeah. We're usually distracted by sensational headlines. So. What's your perspective on uh, what's going on in Peru right now? Yeah, well, let me tell you a little bit about my background and, and how I, why, the, where my vision comes from. I moved to Peru in 94. My children were very small. We lived there for three years and Fujimori was just getting the terrorists under control. You didn't always have water. You didn't always have electricity, even in the cities. Um, but there weren't too many car bombings anymore. So things were becoming quite stable. And, um, there, and there were amazing discoveries being made. So between 94 and 97, Yanacocha went from having three to five million ounces of gold to over, well, now over 50. And Tamina was discovered. I, I was the QP for P Arena. That was sold to Barrick for a billion dollars. Um, of course, I wasn't part of the discovery. I was the due diligence person. But anyway, I, I was there seeing a country just being opened up to foreign investment and phenomenal world-class discoveries being made so that turned peru into you know second largest in the world for copper i think fifth or fourth for gold and just a phenomenal place to explore so i started candente because of that because i thought it well some investors came to me and said you love the country you understand it really well and uh, we'd like to put some money behind you so i've seen several governments and so we come to today where Castillo has, has just taken power and he said very good things uh, as far as the future of, of mining and foreign investment in that he doesn't want, he's not, doesn't want to nationalize, he does want to make sure enough taxes are paid, he wants to make sure communities benefit from the mines in their backyard and of course the whole country needs to benefit from mining. Um, and that's very good, but he, he does have some people around him that are un less predictable or less um, less known as being the kind of leaders that people would look for. Now, Humala was, was similar. He had a communist uh, background and some support by Chavez, and that was in 2010, 11, 12. And everybody worried about that, but in the end he turned, he understood what, what his country needed for an engine of growth is, is mining and, and how international companies needed to be treated. And he actually, under his realm, the, his government um, committed $23 million in projects for the communities around us. And they're building those. They're slow on building them, but they are going ahead. There's 26 projects in irrigation, um, sanitation, roads, schools, everything. So he got it. And uh, I have the highest hope for Castillo as well. But it's a bit rough at the moment because they're just trying to figure out who's, who should, how he should do it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah, you were more or less headhunted, essentially, for Condente, right, based on your experience in the country. And so, yeah, I was headhunted in the way of, would you like to start a company? We'll back you. And and I started it with Freddie Wonky, who was the Peruvian um, geologist that um, worked for Arequipa and, and named Piarina after his daughter. So, yes. Okay. So give us the highlight reel, the elevator pitch, and then we'll zero in on, on where we think investors should be most focused right now. Sure, absolutely. In um, in 2000, and we, we went public in 2001. In 2002, 
we became aware of an opportunity. We were gold explorers to begin with, and it was just by satellite imagery, knowing the right uh, rocks, the right structures, and, and the way they found P Arena. And that's what we were focused on. And all of a sudden, Freddie phoned me one day and said, do we like copper? Do you like copper? Should we like copper? And I said, absolutely. I had worked for Placer Dome and, and evaluated a lot of uh, porphyry coppers in the world. And for me, um, gold is money, copper is life. Everybody needs copper. Gold is great, but everybody needs copper. You know, one computer, one tele cell phone, one refrigerator, everybody wants that. And, and a car, of course. Um, so when he said, you know, w would we like this? I said, let's look at it. Absolutely. I love copper. At the time, it didn't, you know, what was known about it looked like it be might be light on economics. Um, copper was 88 cents a pound, I believe. But I had believed that copper had a big future. So we managed to acquire the asset from the Peruvian government for $75,000 with um, nothing else owing, uh, raised that money to get that. And of course, our gold supporters didn't want us to acquire it, but we did anyway. And we found some copper supporters to, to pay for it. And then um, started drilling and over the years developed a huge resource. It's basically measured and indicated seven and a half billion pounds of copper. But if you add inferred, it's nine billion pounds of copper, two million ounces gold and 54 million ounces silver. And we did um, a bunch of engineering work. So we did a we were launched pre-feasibility and, and stopped with a pre-feasibility study progress report in 2011, which showed at 250 copper, we had an NPV of over a billion dollars and, and IRR 17 and a half. And we were very conservative in those studies, but they still stand up today. You can add, you know, an escalation of costs of 30 percent and more current copper prices and, and it, the NPV is doubled. So it's it's still, you know, the, the studies are, are still very valid. Having said that, we decided at some point that we'd rather we'd like to look at a smaller startup. And so we've been working on some other engineering studies lately, which I can go into it. OK, well, let's let's do that. Actually, I'm curious. OK, so what we did is we said, OK, 95,000 tons per day was was the figure that we, we looked at in 2011, 12, 13, even 14. Um, and that's similar size to Constancia that had Bay bought from Norsemont and built. Right. And, and the economics are very good, but the CapEx was 1.6 billion. And right. today would probably be about two. Um, again, HUD Bay spent 1.7 billion, so it's a very reasonable CapEx for that size of a project. But it does put a bit of a limit on who can build it. And also, so many people approached us and said, with higher copper prices and just understanding the deposit better, we believe you could have a much smaller CapEx, start much smaller, and then you know either stay small or expand into the bigger project anyway so that's what we've been looking at and and in addition to that making some improvements on the project description you know the way it was looked at in in the earlier days okay okay now now prospective shareholders that are curious joanne and they want to know about what kind of news flow can we expect in a six month to 12 month time horizon yeah what would you tell them right now well, first of all, we're just about to launch into our PEA, so that's on the on the back of the desktop study that that Asengo did for us, and that will take three to four months. And with that, we'll have new NPVs, IRR, capex, all the all the you know cash flow analyses, um, and we'll understand how this could what would what would be the cost to to build it smaller, but also show some benefits. Um, one of the ones I really like and Fortescue is very happy about is that we will not need a roaster. Now we do have some arsenic in the ore body. It's not um, it's, it's super high. It's actually sort of like Toromocho and a lot of operations that are now not using a roaster. The roasters were built more for 4% copper, 4% arsenic, I mean. Um, just just but, to up there for yeah. non-technical investors, the significance right. of a roaster is? Right, to get rid of the arsenic. Yeah. So, and it, it comes off as scorodite, which is an inert, mineral so it's not going off in the air the roaster is the reason it was chosen is Codelco put implemented that in some of their mines in chile now arsenic is an impurity and so you don't want it in your eventual copper concentrate and so you have to get rid of it somehow and Codelco used the roaster and it looked pretty good so we put it into our our 2011 studies okay. and it was 10 to 20 percent of our capex yes there it is okay and 
Yeah, and and it worked well, but but over the years we realized so many people are operating with a little bit of arsenic like we have and not needing a roaster, so let's try it. So it's a better environmental situation, it's a lower capex, it's a lower opex, and just functionality is just one less thing to, to be worrying about in your operation. So it's yeah. it's not just lowering our capex, um, but it's it's a huge benefit to the project to not need it. Yeah, and 20 to 30% is no small number. Yeah. Very significant. Okay, so three to four months, we can look forward to uh, fresh NPV uh, from a new PEA, correct? Yeah. Exactly. Um, thinking forward any further, any other trigger points that we could look forward to? Yes. So all of the numbers I've talked about pertain to Canuraco Norte, which is one yeah. deposit within the Canuraco project. We actually have, we believe, two other porphyry deposits. One has 15 holes into it. That's Canuraco Sewer. We know it's a deposit. We just don't know how big and, and average grade yet, but, but all of those holes, most of those holes had copper. And then we also have Quebrada Verde, and this is all within a five kilometer trend. Quebrada Verde has all the signals um, of, a, of another porphyry on surface, the right rocks, the right alterations, the right geochem, geophysics, but we have no drill holes into it. So technically I can't call it another deposit yet, but we believe it's another porphyry. So we are applying for drilling permits for those two okay. targets and that we hope to be doing that, Let, let's say certainly within a year, but hopefully a lot less. Okay. Do you expect yeah. to go back to the market for capital for that program? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. And uh, go ahead, please. Um, there's some interesting discussions going on right now with uh, other strategic investors that are interested in getting involved in the company. So we'll see okay. where exactly when and, and where we, we raise funds, but yes. Okay, anything you'd like to highlight in the cap table, Joanne, uh, management, ownership, etc.? Well, Fortescue out of Australia, one of the world's largest iron ore companies and uh, hugely profitable, owns 18.9% of us right now. They were 19.9% diluted with the warrants being exercised. And so they're our biggest shareholder and very keen to see this project go ahead and, and for them to be part of it. And then um, management and um, board of directors, extremely experienced engineers, financiers, Julio Bonifacio, Sean Waller, um, Andres Mia from Peru. And so we have a really good team. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the timing we're looking for, I guess, what would be October, November, uh, which is typically a great time in the resource market for this news on the PEA. And that's the next big milestone we can look forward to. Joanne, I uh, thank you for your time today and, and letting my audience in on the story and introducing yourself and Condente to my subscribers. I appreciate it. And I'd love to have you back on closer to that date uh, to get an update. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank you, Jay. All right. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit subscribe. I'd love to have you on the team. And if you wanna take the next step and go a bit deeper with my content, I publish a free weekly newsletter every Friday where I debrief my portfolio. I distill the top lessons I've uncovered from the guests I've had on this show every week. And I talk about sectors and industries that I think are poised to move, areas I'm looking for opportunity and places that I'm allocating capital. I love writing it. We publish every Friday. The link is right beneath this video. Love to have you join the tribe.